Family Theatre presents Otto Kruger, Keith Brazell, and William Lundigan. From Hollywood, Family Theatre presents Abalone Boat, starring Keith Brazell and Otto Kruger. William Lundigan will be your host. Family Theatre's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we're to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theatre urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, Abalone Boat, starring Otto Kruger as Yanko and Keith Brazell as Jim. In the dictionary under the word abalone, you will find the definition, any of a genus of gastropod mollusk having a shell of slightly spiral form with a row of apertures. The shell is lined with mother of pearl. There isn't any more, for old Noah Webster was never one to spend an unnecessary word. And what did he know of the hardships and dangers the men of the abalone fleet face when they sail from San Pedro to pry this toothsome delicacy from the rocks and ledges in the twilight depths of the blue Pacific? This is the story of Janko Stepanovich, born in Yugoslavia, captain and owner of the abalone boat, star of the Adriatic. It also concerns his sons Pete and Mike, his daughter Maria, and the man who loves Maria, Jimmy Stanton. Most of all, perhaps, it concerns courage, the raw courage which enables a man to rise above himself and face an unknown and ghastly horror. Hey, Mike! Guess what I just seen, Mike? Wait, wait till I make this shot. Okay, Shorty, what was it? I just seen your sister Maria with Jimmy Stanton. They just come out of the movies. I didn't know he was back. He's been back a couple of days. Pooley told me he got discharged. Pooley says he never got to Korea. He was probably so scared all the time they didn't dare send him. Well, I don't know. Pooley just said they kept him in Japan. Now he's back in Pedro. Well, I'll take care of him. What's that sister of mine seeing a drip like him, anyway? Well, I don't know, Mike. But maybe it's because he went to college. College? She's been nuts about him ever since we were all in high school. All the time we was away, she wouldn't even go out with any other guys. Well, didn't I ask her for a date? Didn't she hand me the old deep freeze? Yeah, I remember. Was he driving a car? No, no, he ain't got one. He was walking her home. How long ago did you see him? Well, maybe uh, 10 minutes, maybe 15. You'd be coming back this way, huh? You want me to get the rest of the gang? We could do a job on it. I don't need a gang. Well, I was just asking. Anytime I need any help taking care of that mama's boy, it'll be snowing in Pedro on the 4th of July. Okay, wise guy. Mike. Hey, I didn't recognize you at first. Yeah, I'm glad to see you. I was going to look you up tomorrow. So I looked you up instead. Now listen, punk, I got one thing to tell you. Stay away from Maria. Wait a minute, Mike. Maria you and I... You heard what I said. Now stay away from her. So that's the way it is. Well, what if I told you I intend seeing Maria anytime I want to? You haven't got nerve enough. You really think so, Mike? I'll show you what I think. <clears throat> All right, if you ain't yellow, get up. Why should I? I'm not going to fight you, Mike. You're yellow. You're forgetting one thing. I just got out of the Army. So what? I won't fight you because I'd probably cripple you for life in 30 seconds. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Your, your dad and Pete wouldn't like that. It wouldn't be any good to them on their abalone boat anymore, and your sister wouldn't like it either. That's the main reason I won't fight you, Mike. Your sister and I are going to be married. this I hear about you waylaying Jimmy and beating him up. Did he tell you about it? No, he didn't. Shorty told me. Did he tell you I hit Jimmy and I couldn't get him to fight? Fight, fight. That's all I ever hear from you and that bunch you hang around with. Listen, Mike, you may be my brother, but let me tell you this. With the judo Jimmy learned in the army, if he'd wanted to hurt you, he could have broken every bone in your body. He can try any time he wants to. He doesn't want to. He's too much of a gentleman. Huh. Which is something you'd never understand. You wouldn't have a chance against oh, him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just because you're a great big brave diver on Papa's boat doesn't mean that what you can come up... What is this I hear? Why do I hear my son and daughter quarrel? Because, because Maria's Mike going around too fresh with the that he could... Silence! You man and woman, you're chattering magpies, huh? All right, you are my son, Miel. 
Speak for it. Okay, Pop. Maria wants to marry Jimmy Stanton. I didn't say I wanted it to marry you. Silence! But Papa, she I said... am still strong enough to take sick to you, Mir. Now, now, what is this uh, talk of marriage? Huh? Look at Mike's knuckles, Papa. Look how they're all skinned. He did that last night when he hit Jimmy Stanton. You, you hit him, Mir? Sure, I hit him. Yeah, but he said something back to you. Huh? Of course he didn't. I talk now to your brother, Maria. All right, he hit you first, Mir. No. No, you hit him first. Yeah. Right. Because he took Maria to the movies and took her home. Hmm. Is this true, Maria? Sure, it's true. Why not? Well, you didn't ask me if I would permit it. Oh, look, Papa, this isn't the old country. This is the United States. I'm an American and I'm over 21. I work for my own living. It's time I married. Maria. I mean it, Papa. But you are too young. And we are family. You, Maria, Peter, Miel, and I, younger, your father. Now, enough of this fighting. Well, then tell Mike to lay off Jimmy Stanton. This, uh, this young man here, Mike, he will not fight. Perhaps he is afraid. Eh? Oh, don't fool yourself. He could take that brother of mine and tie him into pretzels. He could not. He could, too, and you know it. Silence! Uh, you, you, you think you love this Jimmy Stanton, Maria? Oh, I know I do. I've been crazy about him ever since I was a freshman in high school. Yeah, he loves you? Yes. Yeah, well, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, Grigor Obrenovich and I, we had hoped you would marry his Alexander. Oh, well, I wouldn't marry him if he was the last man on earth. What's the matter with Alex? He's a good guy. I don't love him. I love Jimmy Stanton, and I want him to be my husband. Very well, very well, Maria. Well, I will meet your young man. I will talk with him. And if he is not brave man, I will make him laughing stock of San Pedro so he will leave and you will not marry him. There is never coward in Stepanovich family, eh? No coward will marry into family. Pop's all right, Jimmy. He's really swell, but he's awfully old-fashioned. Oh, I'll get along with him. Wait till I tell him about my new job. Ninety a week to start with ain't hey, baby. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Pop wouldn't admit it, but he's prejudiced against you. He heard how Mike knocked you down and he didn't fight back. Well, you know why I didn't. Well, I know, but he's got the idea maybe you were afraid. And, well, that's one thing above everything else he can't take. Back in those Montenegrin mountains where he comes from, cowards didn't last very long. Uh, <clears throat> uh, you, uh, you wish to marry my daughter Maria, Mr. Stanton, eh? Yes, I'm in love with her, and, and she is with me. Uh-huh, yeah, that, that's what she has told me. Uh, you, uh, you, uh, you know it is duty of husband to protect wife, always and against all dangers of every kind? Of course. Ah, uh, yes. And, uh, well, I must be sure of man who marries Maria. Uh, I, I would make test. Well, what did you have in mind, Mr. Stepanovich? Now, it takes brave man to go down deep in ocean. My sons, my Peter and my Mihail, they are brave men. They are divers on my boat. Listen, Pop, if you think for a minute... Oh, wait a minute, Maria. Listen to your father. Three days from now, my boat, Star of Adriatic, goes to St. Nicholas Island where we dive for pink abalone. Now, they will be deep. That's 50 to 70 feet. I'll be on board, Mr. Stepanovich. Well, you can't, Jimmy. How about your new job? It'll wait. This is more important. Now, uh, how long will it take me to learn to be a diver, sir? Well, that will depend on you. That's not easy. I don't go for this at all, Pop. Just because Pete and Mike are crazy enough to take their lives in their hands every time they dive when they could have good jobs ashore. I, uh, uh, you will have three days to change your mind, Mr. Stanton. Let's elope, Jimmy. We could take a bus to Yuma tonight and be married in the morning. Nah, that wouldn't settle anything. Your, your dad would still be suspicious of me, and he'd always hate me for marrying you without his consent. But you don't realize what deep diving in the ocean's like. Pete and Mike have told me there are all kinds of awful things down there. Moray eels and octopus and sharks Now, and... look, Pete and Mike are still alive, aren't they? Yes. Well, look, I will be, too. Don't worry. He is late, Mir. No, no, here he comes. 
Where does he think we're going? He's loaded down like we're going to be gone six months. Well, we must be patient with him, Mihail. We must show him no favors, but we must be fair. Hi, Mr. Stepanovich. Hi, Mike. Yeah, come aboard, Mr. Stanton. What's in all the packages? Oh, my diving gear. I just bought it. Your diving gear? Sure, I got a face mask and swim fins and an aqua lung. The salesman said I could stay underwater for an hour with an oxygen tank this size. You might as well leave that junk on the dock. No, no, no. Keep it, keep it, Mr. Sender. Well, what's the matter with it? That kind of stuff's for amateurs, for skin divers. On Star of the Adriatic, we use regulation diving suit, Mr. Sender. At 40 feet with that kind of an outfit, you get the bend so bad you'd be doubled up like two in a hammock. The bends? Yeah, they are caused by a sudden release of pressure, Mr. Stanton. It's, it's nitrogen, bubbles forming blood. Oh, many years ago, I have them once. They are very painful. And sometimes you die. It ain't the going down. It's the coming back up to the surface that knocks you for a loop. You gotta come up slow in easy stages so you get used to the pressure getting less all the time. <laughs> I see. Well, look, maybe I can return this stuff and get my money back. Not now, not now. It's time we cast off, huh? This is the first lesson in learning to be a diver, Mr. Stanton. There will be many more. This is a bunch of hooey, Pop. Putting the suit on now. Why don't we wait till we get to San Nicholas? We are teaching Mr. Stanton to be diver, me here. He must know everything about the equipment we use. Okay, okay. Let's get it over with. All right, now. His lead weights on shoes, Mr. Stanton. They help the diver to descend, and they also keep him vertical in water. I see, sir. So, when helmet is bolted to neck plate, that's here and here... The suit is completely watertight and airtight. Now this here, this, this is lifeline. Uh, this is the uh, air hose. Uh, this here is telephone wire. This from helmet to boat. So here, here is motor which pumps air through the hose to the diver. Over there, over there is winch that pulls the diver to surface when he's ready to come up. It is slightly complicated. It's like piloting an airplane. You either do the right thing at the right time without even thinking about it, or else the uh, undertaker's got another customer. Well, uh, uh, how soon can I dive, Mr. Stepanovich? Yeah, when I am sure you are ready. Now, you will watch everything we do. We will be at St. Nicholas before dark, and Peter will make first dive in morning. <laughs> What are you doing on deck, Jimmy? Everybody else is asleep. Oh, I'm just looking at San Nicholas in the moonlight, Pete. Oh. It's rugged, but sure is beautiful. Yeah, I know. I never get tired of it. Say, I haven't had a chance to ask you before, Jimmy. What's the dope on this fight you and Mike had? No, it wasn't a fight. I wouldn't tangle with him. I, I, I didn't want to hurt him. That's what I figured. What was it all about? Well, Mike seems to have the same sentiments your dad has. Neither one thinks I'd make Maria a good husband. What do you think, Pete? Oh, Maria's over 21. I don't believe in interfering one way or the other. <laughs> Pop's idea of making a diver out of you is nuts. You don't really want to be a diver, do you? No, of course I don't. Look, I got a job that starts at 90 a week waiting in Pedro for me when I get back. 90? Then what are you doing here? Well, didn't your dad tell you, Pete? This is in the nature of a test of my intestinal fortitude. If I, uh, if I don't flunk it, he'll consider me as a possible son-in-law. I guess the old boy will never change. He and I had a whale of a fight when I married my wife. Her name was Kathy O'Brien. Well, it's not exactly Yugoslav. Yeah, hardly. Now he thinks there's nobody like her, and he spoils the kids till they're rotten. Well, don't worry about it, Jimmy. This is a new spot we've been wanting to try. We may find so many abalone so fast, you'll never even have a chance to put a suit on. He's at 60 feet, Pop. 65. He's on the bottom now. Good. You put on these phones, Mr. Stanton. Do not take time off for a second. If he should meet danger, a second might mean difference between life and death. I understand, Mr. Stepanovich. Pop. Pop, I'm just uh, This is Jimmy, Pete. Your uh, dad gave me the phones for a few minutes. Oh, well, tell him I'm outside a big cave. I don't see any abalone here, so I'm going inside. All right, Mr. Stepanovich, Pete said there's a big cave and he's going inside. Oh, God grant his line will not foul. You you tell him to be careful. Uh, your dad says be careful, Pete. Yeah, good old pop. Inside the cave now. 
Jimmy! Jimmy, the whole cave is loaded with abalone. Hundreds of thousands. Hey, Pete says the cave's loaded with abalone. What? What? Here, let, let me have the phone. Here they are. Here. Hey, this is now your father, Peter. Yeah. What's that you say? We're rich, Bob. There isn't an inch of space oh. in the whole cave that isn't covered. Big pinks. Some of them ten inches across. Nobody's ever been in here before. Uh, what, what is it, Peter? What is wrong, my son? <clears throat> Peter! Peter, what's happened? Octopus! A big one has got me! You use your knife, Peter. Strike for the eyes. I can't. He, he nailed me from the back and he's pinned my arm. What's wrong, Pop? Octopus. He got Pete? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I will send you help, Peter. You better pray for me. There isn't a chance. You try to pull me loose, the line will cut on the rocks at the no. cave mouth. Listen to me. Do not waste strength in useless struggle. I... Younger Zepanovich, your father, have promised I will send you help. Let me hear it. You will put on diving suit, and you will take a harpoon and go down the line, hand over hand to your brother, and kill octopus. You've blown your top. I ain't tangling with no octopus. You will do as I say. I can't, Pop. You don't know what you're asking me to do. I am not asking. I am ordered. But I won't do it. It isn't fair to ask me to. Pete took his chances the same as I do every time I dive. If it was me down there, you wouldn't send Pete. Violence! Coward. I will try to rescue my only son who now remains, Peter Stepanovich. No, Mr. Stepanovich. I'll go down to help Pete. Peter, yeah. Mr. Stanton is on way down with Harpoon. What's the matter with Mike? We do not speak of him. He is coward. He would not go to help you. Don't be too tough on him, Pop. I don't blame him. Mr. Stanton, volunteer. Same guy you thought was yellow, huh? Yeah, well, I can only ask his pardon if he lives. Uh, he should be down to cave soon. Well, I hope he rams that harpoon in the octopus. Not in me. Pop is coming in the cave now. Yeah. Jimmy's got him, Pop. He's turning me loose. Oh, no. God be praised. Uh, octopus is dying, Pop. Wait, wait. He's caught Jimmy with one of his tentacles. Yeah, your knife, Peter. Can you now reach it? Yeah, yeah, Pop. Uh, uh, that did it. Hey, no. No, Jimmy, don't. What? What? What is it, Peter? Watch for him, Papa. Take care of him. He swam out of the cave, and I think he's going straight to the surface. That's fast work. You called the Coast Guard less than an hour ago, and here comes a helicopter now. Oh. You remember you didn't want to put in that ship to shore radio? Well, where'd we be now without it, huh? Uh, yeah, I know. I, I am old, Peter. Too old. Too old in my ways. Yeah, I, I go to see no more. Star of the Adriatic, that's yours. Oh, don't talk like that. You die on shore. Oh, oh that poor guy. He got the bends bad. One good thing he's knocked out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, if only he had held to the line and come up slowly. How could you expect him to keep his head? It was his first time. He's not a diver. Yeah, I can make diver of him. Yeah, over my dead body. What's the trouble, Captain? Diver with a bends. Okay, we'll lower a bosun's chair, strap him in, and we'll pull him up. We'll take him to the decompression chamber at Terminal Island. Lower away. Yeah, you, you will go with him, Peter. After he is decompressed, take him to best room in hospital. How deep was he? 65 feet with an aqualung. Oh, what was the matter with him? Was he crazy? That could be a matter of opinion. Look, Doc, let's not waste any more time. Get him in the chamber and straighten him out. Hi, Pete. Hi, Jimmy. Well, how you feeling? Swell. There isn't an awful lot I can say, kid. Thanks, you saved my life. Ah, skip it. How's Mike? Uh, all the pieces. Pop kicked him out, says he never wants to see him again. Ah, oh, that's no good. You know what they say, Pete. Where ignorance is bliss, tis folly to be wise. Look, Mike knew what it'd be like I didn't. Right now, I, uh, I don't think I'd try it again. Well, maybe you wouldn't, maybe you would. 
Look, Maria and Pop will be here any minute now. You still want to marry my sis? I'm going to marry Maria. And do like I tell you. You know what a funny guy Pop is. You let on like after all this, you don't want to marry Maria. You'll probably have him on his knees begging you to. <laughs> I'll do better than that. I'll fix yeah, it. So, hold it, Mike. Hold it, hold it. I think I hear him coming now. Yeah. Jimmy, darling, you fool, you wonderful, marvelous. Fool. Oh, hello, Maria. Uh, hi, Mr. Stepanovich. Yeah, Jimmy. I cannot thank you on board. You, you could not hear me. Yeah, forget it. Yanker Stepanovich never forgets my son. Wait a minute. Maybe I've changed my mind about wanting to marry your daughter. Jimmy, don't say that. Uh, not want to marry her. Uh, I, I don't blame you. Stepanovich, no longer his honored name. Yeah, yeah, come, Peter. Come, Maria. We go now. Wait a minute. Pop. Look, I was only fooling. I'll marry Maria, but only on one condition. Yeah? Well, what, what is that? That the whole Stepanovich family, everyone has got to be at the wedding. And the only best man I'll even consider is Mike. And now, your host, William Lundigan. You know, if there really were a pot at the foot of the rainbow containing the greatest treasure in the world, do you know what that treasure would be? Happiness. Yes, happiness, the most priceless possession there is. I think if you get right down to it, every one of us agree that happiness is the one thing we really want. Lots of times we get a little sidetracked, thinking that a new job, a new car, more money will bring us happiness. But deep in our hearts, we know it won't. Because real happiness has nothing to do with wealth or material things. Happiness is a quality that comes from love, unselfish love, love of God, love of our husbands and wives, our children, our families. And the road to happiness isn't a rainbow. It's a difficult path, but we have to keep climbing, pulling, working all the time. But one thing that smooths the path is prayer, family prayer. Try it and you'll see. Ask God sincerely and with complete faith in his understanding for his help. God is willing and anxious to help you. All you have to do is ask him. So pray. Pray together as a family. For a family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. <laughs> From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Abalone Boat, starring Keith Brazell and Otto Kruger. William Lundigan was your host. Others in our cast were Alice Backus, Addie Firestone, Whitfield Connor, Francis Urey, and Guy Hamilton. The script was written by Jack Mitchell, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed and transcribed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when Family Theater will present Another Catcher in the Family, starring Pat O'Brien and Betty Lynn. Join us, won't you? This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.